Can you please tell us a little about your background with regard to art and how you got involved in being a professional artist? Uh, how did I get involved? I think it was uh, mainly my interest in the subject matter of birds and, and wildlife. And I used to be a kid, I'd go out to the beaches and places like that where I'd, and the golf course and find dead birds and then take the specimen home and then throw it up onto the shed roof and it would rot and I'd get the skulls from them, the specimens and collect them. And then uh, I did that at first and then as I got older I started to paint them with gouache for several years. And uh, that was quite successful when I started to sell those. Then I uh, started to etch them and that went on for seven years. That got a bit tiresome. I got bound into that and uh, I really wanted to start to paint but that was so successful uh, I couldn't stop so easily. Uh, but anyway, one day I did start painting them I mean and uh, that was the exciting times learning how to paint with, uh, with acrylic first. Uh, why did I use acrylic? Uh, I think because it, it dried quickly. Whereas I know lots of people say the, the better medium is, is oil paint because it's got a greater colour range and uh, character. But uh, I seem to prefer acrylic until more recently that I've discovered I can paint with enamel paints and mix them with oil paints. So I've got the pace of the dry, uh, the drying capacity of the house paints, which are the enamels. They speed up the drying, but then I can also, from my oil paints, get a, a wide range of colours. So I get the uh, the best of those two worlds of speed and range of colour. What excited you about learning to paint? Uh, I suppose it was a way of, because I collected uh, minerals and animals and shells, it was a way of collecting things in a different method, that is putting them onto paper, which is what I first used. So I suppose it was a form of collecting where you possess something example of that thing you were interested in but then uh, I suppose that's not quite true because then you try and sell them so then you perhaps give them to the world for exchange for money uh, and uh, that leads us on to what is the primary motivation behind your work I made some notes as you were a bit slow in getting here this morning gave me time to <laughs> write some notes down uh, the motivation, well I thought, well I do it for myself firstly and then quickly after that for the viewer and uh, unlike some artists I do it for visual pleasure and affirmation. Uh, I don't do it as some artists do, they do it as an expression of anger and posturing. That's not my style. Uh, I try to engage the eye and avoid, avoid propaganda. Lots of artists have done that historically. Uh, I don't think that works very well nowadays. Media of various sorts do that better. Uh, books and TV and uh, the internet does it. So you can't compete with that, so there's no point in trying to hoist your politics onto your audience. They don't care. Uh, but lately my problem as an artist is to uh, make my works a bit more semi-abstracted, make them kind of hybrids, because I've been straight it, it, with my works for so long, painting them with great fidelity and accuracy. Uh, trying to break away from that has taken quite a while and it's still an effort, a bit of a struggle. Uh, by doing that it makes me be more uh, expressive and 
I think people like that uh, as well as myself. Uh, in other words, I don't want to repeat reality, but to intensify it. I think that's a good idea, intensifying it. Uh, that allows room for the audience to interpret it. Uh, they enjoy that, and they can fill in the gaps of what might be in the work that they can imagine it's displaying. Uh, that one there is, is, a, is a, an example. People wonder, what the hell's going on? And then they can uh, try and find something there that will explain it, or they can talk to me. Uh, so, I don't want the audience to be passive, but a collaborator with the artist. So, what themes or issues do you wish the viewer to take away with them when they view your work? What themes? Uh, what was the second part of the question? Themes and... It, or issues. Oh, issues, that's right. Uh, I suppose just to, just to enjoy what they're looking at. I think artists seem to be a bit embarrassed by that idea of pleasure getting pleasure from an artwork or an artist is embarrassed offering pleasure. It seems to be a bit of a no-no. It's like looking at the, the unsmiling face of a pop group when they're shot as a group. You know, they're all scowling and sullen as if this gives them some integrity. Well, I think artists sometimes are drawn into repeating that, uh, that thought. I think it's unnecessary. Bit of a posture, really. Uh, yes, I mean, people like Monet, Renoir, you see, they didn't uh, speak for their audience. They, they uh, or rather, they didn't uh, speak at them. They spoke, they spoke for them. I think that was uh, an important distinction. Uh, they weren't in revolt, and hence their work wasn't revolting. Uh, what do you like most about your work? Uh, what do I like most about it? Well, the fact that it's, it gives me a chance to indulge in my, my interests. I like a piece of this landscape looking over our west coast. Uh, I, can, uh, I know the person who, for instance, owns that house and uh, 